namaste to all a very very beautiful message by my acharya in yesterday's yagya in the new year yagya my acharya told that samvat sara jayat says vedas that every moment every second every minute every new year samvat sara means year every new year is created by almighty god and by the power of almighty god so we must worship almighty god whether it is new year or end of the year or middle of the year or every time every moment we must try to worship almighty god and uh, end of the every year and beginning of the new year try to think what you did good what you did bad in the previous years and try to correct whatever you have done mistakes if you have done mistakes last year try to correct it take a sankal to correct it in this year and always try to do shubh karma each and every moment when you try to do shubh karma the shubh karma will give you pious results and ved vidya will make you pious ved vidya will make your character good ved vidya will make your future bright so always try to adopt try to hold the vedas in life ved tumhe dhanwan gunwan banayega mera acharya my acharya was telling so ved vidya will make you rich ved vidya will not only make you rich by money it will also make you rich by your character and in the new year take a sankalp that you do not miss agnihotra even one day agnihotra should not be missed even at any point of time even when there is a great sankat great difficulty in life then also agnihotra should not be left so nitya havan nitya agnihotra we must do <coughs> and my acharya was uh, telling beautiful qualities about atithis that is acharyas for example yesterday my acharya came little bit late for the yagya my acharya was telling a very very important shiksha from vedas that waiting for acharya that acharya is coming uh, is going to come for yagya you are waiting for 1 hour 2 hours etc that wait is tapasya but if you have utmost faith and devotion on, on acharya and when you try to do lot of om jap or try to do seva in the ashram until the time acharya is yet to come to the yagya that is a tapasya so waiting for acharya is a great tapasya waiting for his darshans and uh, veda says atithi atithim paripaksh paripashyati vai deva yajnam just by seeing the darshan of an acharya your deva yajna your yajna is complete just by seeing seeing means darshan of acharya you have so much of respect so much of love so much of faith on your acharya just waiting for his darshan and then he comes to the yagya suddenly and then seeing that acharya with your love and affection and your shraddha itself is is a yagya you don't need to do an yagya to complete the yagya just by having darshans of acharya itself is yagya is what uh, my acharya said and uh, please understand my acharya was telling another important point from rigveda Rigveda says that Almighty God is present only in two places. Present means He is omnipresent, but present means He is manifested in only two places. One is the inside the heart of a Rishi who is a Samadhi Yogi. The other place is in his residence. So going to his residence itself is going to the place of Almighty God. So if you are waiting in the Acharya's ashram for Acharya, then it is. as if you are sitting with almighty god there because almighty god is manifested there almighty god is residing in the residence of uh, acharya says rigveda and almighty god is not present anywhere he is omnipresent but he is not manifested anywhere in the world he is present only where an acharya lives and he is present inside the rishi's hridaya and based on his because of his manifestation inside the pasvi's hridaya whatever an acharya speaks becomes vedas becomes the knowledge of vedas and also my acharya says if you are traveling like th- some people come from south india to north india some people come from foreign some people come from london usa thailand etc etc my acharya said if you are traveling towards an acharya's residence and you are remembering that acharya you are remembering vedas you are remembering that acharya and you are traveling towards that acharya place then every step of yours is counted as yagya and in fact uh, he told a story from uh, mahabharata where you know yudhishthir goes to uh, supachrishi to bring him for this yagya for completion of his yagya uh, then supachrishi says i will not come with you sorry i cannot go with you i will go with you only if you donate me 1000 punya of uh, you know ashwamedha yagya 
if you donate me 1000 ashwamedha yagya punya then i will i will go with you otherwise i cannot go with you because you know yudhishthir went with this uh, cl- with this clothes of you know the raja clothes he was uh, he was wearing uh, kavas kundal he was he was dressed as a king and then he went to the chupachrishi to bring him he went in the raja's dress and he he requested can you please come and complete my yagya the rishi says i will not go with you but i will go with you if you donate me 1000 ashwamedha yagya punya then uh, yudhishthir will come back then sri krishna will say to draupadi you go and you do like this you go uh, by barefoot you go uh, as humble as possible don't uh, dress yourself as a queen just go as a normal disciple of supachrishi go with humbleness and request him he will come with you then draupadi will go then supachrishi will say that okay i will co- go with you give me the uh, you know you must uh, give me dan of 1000 ashwamedha yagya punya then draupadi will say see as i have learned from my acharyas if you walk towards the residence of an acharya with acharya in the mind with uh, you know utmost faith and shraddha and love and affection towards the acharya then each and every step of yours is giving you benefit of 1000 ashwamedha yagya so uh, sorry each and every step is giving 108 ashwamedha yagya punya so i have walked uh, from my residence to your residence maybe lakhs of steps i have walked so i am giving you all the you know result of that uh, that tapasya to you supachrishi please come to the yagya so supachrishi will come so uh, this is the sto- my acharya was telling the story from mahabharata to explain the greatness of you know you going towards the residence of an acharya with utmost faith shraddha devotion so and uh, further my acharya says that why you are going to acharya's residence is to listen vedas is to do yagya and by doing yagya the entire cosmos will become purified by doing yagya because the rishi is conducting the yagya the rishi is giving blessings in the yagya so because of this yagya the pious deed the entire cosmos will get purified and every living being will get the benefit of this yagya and my acharya said that some of you are, you you are disciples of me and you have always prayed for my long health uh, long uh, life and then good health etc and it's a very pious deed because when a rishi lives in this universe anywhere he lives he lives in jungle he lives in a place wherever a rishi resides the benefit of his uh, life is always you know benefiting the entire earth the entire universe so uh, you must always pray for long life of uh, your acharya because the more the acharya lives the benefit is to the is to the entire world it is not a, uh, it is really a selfless prayer my acharya was telling yesterday and uh, uh, my acharya uh, also told that you must also understand the vedic truth that in this world till the end of this universe there will be at least one or two tapasvis there will be some tapasvis living always but it is your duty to find out where a tapasvi lives and go to him or request him to come to your home if he is not coming to your home it's okay you go to his place and listen the knowledge so but my acharya said this is a vedic truth that every time until the end of the universe there will be one or two tapasvis always present but they will not be in public you must search them that's what my acharya told <clears throat> and my acharya told about avidya people are living in avidya they have so many difficulties in life but they say that i am fine they think that living in difficulty itself is okay they think dukh is sukh this is called as avidya you must understand what is sukh what is dukh and you must try to come out of dukh by doing tapasya you must go towards the eternal sukh eternal happiness which is moksha and my uh, um, acharya uh, told another important thing is when an acharya is coming for example there is atharveda mantra in i think in the 12th or i forgot the kanda maybe 5th kanda or 12th kanda where there is a atithi chapter my acharya was telling that ved mantra explaining that the ved mantra says if the acharya is coming to your place or if you are you are you are doing and sitting and doing homa and acharya suddenly comes then the mantra says leave the homa leave putting the avutis leave chanting the mantra attend to the acharya and ask acharya with utmost request A- ask him with utmost request acharya ji can i continue my yagya if you allow me i will continue then if acharya says do not continue your yagya leave it then the ved mantra says leave the yagya as it is because attending to acharya is more important than yagya 
so my acharya told that see the this is the amount of importance almighty god gives to rishis who have attained the samadhi you can leave your yajna for the acharya because and you uh, no acharya will say to stop the yajna but you have to ask him you have to serve him first this is the importance almighty god gives to rishis uh, samadhis yogis so and but by leaving that yajna based on the instructions of agya of that acharya by leaving that yajna you will get the full punya of yajna because you have obeyed to the samadhis yogi so that is the importance what rishi uh, muni is is ge- getting from almighty god my acharya was telling and lastly my acharya was also telling another thing is the sharir the body of the acharya the body of the yogi is in turiya state of course he is attained the samadhi the body itself is called as turiya teet avastha so serving an acharya for example serving him food serving him water serving him clo- giving him clothes donating money is actually uh, there is a mantra yajnam yajnam gachah that means the whatever you are donating is actually you are serving almighty god uh, and the most purest person in this universe is a samadhist yogi that you must always understand <clears throat> and uh, my acharya told no rishi muni normally give the brahma vidya to uh, anybody normally but i am i have done this uh, mistake by giving brahma vidya to you people but you have you have to utilize it you have not utilized my knowledge yet but you must always strive very very hard to utilize it so that means the message is very clear that none of his disciples are doing proper tapasya so it's a message great message to even me and many of uh, you know people like me that we must continue more tapasya we must focus on indri sayam we must control our senses we must uh, limit our enjoyments and we must always strive to focus on the vedic path so and uh, my acharya told this body is jad jagat this human body is jad jagat and you are chetan jagat by using the jad jagat by using your body you must try to understand who you are and that is what every rishi muni has done and you must also try to do the same and this knowledge is called as brahmodanam brahmodanam is the knowledge or the we can say the food for jivatma whatever we are eating the clothes we are wearing the jewels we are wearing the money property husband wife children daughter etc they are panchodanam they are for the body for you it is atma vidya brahma vidya so always try to fo- try to focus on brahmodanam try to give brahmodanam to you every day try to do name jap every day sit alone in a silent place and then do the name jap of almighty god om if you are dikshit then do the name of almighty god whatever you have been given in diksha if you are not dikshit try to chant the name of the almighty god om and try to you know understand the power the quality of almighty god and my acharya lastly told this ved mandir is the ashram here this the purpose of this ashram is for everybody to do tapasya so come here for doing tapasya come here for doing yajna come here for doing seva in the ashram do not come here for wasting your time do not come here for chit chatting do not come here for you know uh, just like that you okay, it's a good place let me go and come back but this ashram should be utilized for tapasya my acharya told i think it was a very very great uh, uh, you know message in the new year and i hope uh, you probably understood and try to follow and i will also try to follow thank you so much namaste om